Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Planning Committee uh, for the 11th of July 2022. Uh, we're going to kick straight off with the agenda. Uh, firstly, apologies for absence. Uh, have received apologies from Councillor Goodall, Councillor Summers, Councillor Maycock. Anybody know of any other apologies? We are missing a couple of other people. Right. Uh, I'm also aware that Councillor Daniels is stuck in traffic uh, and will be here shortly. Item two. Uh, minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, are, is the uh, committee fine that these are a true and correct record? Councillor Harper moving. Councillor Claymore seconding. Okay. Thank you very much. All those in favour? Thank you very much. That is carried. Declarations of interest, item number three. Section 33.2 of the Localism Act 2011 permits an authority to grant dispensation from either or both of the restrictions not to participate and or vote on a matter in which they have pecuniary interests. Members of Tamworth Borough Council's Planning Committee have received a dispensation for applications relating to the future High Streets project for a period of two years, starting from 7th of July 2020-22. If members will remember, I declared an interest for us all last time at the last meeting. This now covers us until the 7th of July 2024, so I'm not gonna have to do that again. Any other declarations of interest from members? Fantastic. We'll go straight into the applications then. Item number four. A, zero, and it's application 0300 stroke 2021, Statful Barn, change of use of land and buildings to events. I'm going to hand over to Glenn. Thank you, Chair. Um, just one small amendment to the report. Um, I think on the third page I mentioned reference to a gym. Uh, that no longer is the case. The um, gym use will now be ceasing um, as of the end of August, so please ignore references to that. So, yep, Stafford Barn is an existing leisure facility located to the northeast of the borough, um, located off the Ashby Road, the A5 9, A493. Uh, the venue is centred around a heritage railway, which puts on various events um, inside an existing buildings and on the large field surroundings. This application is for various events that they are seeking to and have been holding at the facility, so the application is retrospective. Um, it's a relatively isolated site with several residential, residential properties located to the north. So, yeah, as indicated, the proposal is a change of use of an existing barn and the fields around it to hold some uh, for further events which have been highlighted on a schedule which supports the application. Um, I've highlighted it on this page. Apologies if you can't quite see the exact references to the events. But in a nutshell, we're looking at wedding fairs, a classic car field event, dog show, um, other special events, um, a war event, a 1940s dance, um, an event at Halloween, a model show, some car auctions, and the Tamworth Business Awards. Uh, within this schedule, there are various uh, stipulations in terms of when they'll be held, uh, when yeah, on the exact days and the hours of which the events will take place. So considerations. Um, so we've got the principle, which um, as established uh, leisure facility is a continuation of this use and therefore supporting the local economy, which uh, is part of EC2 is a supported um, development type. With this, however, we do need to factor in that um, the effect of the living conditions of people living nearby, because obviously more events, more people turning up, the noise impacts of that and the highway issues that relate to more cars on the road at various times. We've also got reference to a specific junction. This is the Fountains Junction to the south. Um, obviously, people entering the site will be using this junction as a, um, a main route into the site. Um, no physical development is actually taking place, so this is purely just change of use. Therefore, design considerations are irrelevant to this application. On highway impact, um, the proposal is deemed to be acceptable um, by County Council uh, officers. Notably, it's the events that are going to be taking place on the weekends and bank holidays at various times, and it's because of these times and these the when it's going to take place is why it's been deemed acceptable. Notably, obviously, if it was going to happen during you know office hours, for example, it would have more of a highway impact than more of an issue, but at this instance, because of when it's going to take place, deemed to be acceptable. Um, and also on amenity, um, initially the applicant did fail to recognise there were potential impacts on amenity, but however, a survey work was con uh, commissioned and then gone back to the environmental health officers at the council and deemed to be acceptable. So therefore, in conclusion, we have a development here that is policy compliant in terms of supporting the um, existing economy and potentially the new economy in terms of the jobs created 
as part of the development. We have put various conditions on the development, restricting the use and the uh, yeah the use of the site. And again, that's highlighted in the report. Highway movements at various times are conditioned, so making sure that um, they only turn up when they should be turning up in terms of the actual uses, and therefore a lack of severe impact is is born as per the MPPF. Survey data has been produced um, conducting, uh, concluding that noise levels won't be overly significant to harm the residential amenity of living, those living nearby, and therefore the application is recommended for approval as per the report. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Glenn. Uh, there are no speakers on this item, so I'm going to open it straight up to uh, uh, questions. Uh, any questions for uh, from members? And good evening, Councillor Wade. Uh, hi, yeah. um, just one question. Uh, what are the are there any sort of licensing issues um, uh, at the at this uh, particular site, or will there be any need for it in the future? <coughs> Pardon. Thank you. Not that I'm aware of. No licensing issues have come across my desk anyway. Um, and again, licensing. Unfortunately, sorry to sound like a bit of councillor here, but it's not my department. But obviously, if there's anything, then they will obviously have to go through the relevant channels of the council for that process. Councillor Claymore. Thank you, Chair. Um, I noticed that at least one of the events is three days and a couple of them are two days. Will there be overnight stays at the venue? Not that I'm aware of, no. Any other questions from members? Councillor Box. Okay. Has there been any objectors to this? Because uh, you give a very broad programme of what they want to do on what was traditionally farmland. Yeah, we've had one objector. Um, it's a residential property that lives near, near, nearby to the site. Again, they were concerned about the noise levels that might be generated by these events. Um, I think that's as a result they had to go away, do some more survey work to conclude that the noise levels that would be generated would not be so significant to warrant um, any sort of mitigation measures or refusal. So it has it has been generated out of that. But uh, yeah, Environmental Health have looked at it and considered that the noise levels that will be produced wouldn't be so significant to warrant any sort of refusal or any sort of mitigation measures in place. Thank you, Glenn. Any other questions from members? In that case, um, uh, in terms of the Council's constitution, I'm going to move this recommendation. Uh, it's subject to the conditions highlighted under Section 106 Legal Agreement requiring £7,000 for a travel plan and associated costs, e.g. monitoring. Uh, is there anybody who's willing to second that motion? Councillor Claymore, do you wish to reserve the right or do you wish to speak now? Reserve the right, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Claymore. It's been moved and seconded. Does anybody wish to debate the matter, the, the item proposed? Councillor Harper. Very briefly, I just think this is a terrific uh, application. I can't see anything, any great problem with it. Um, given that our future aims as a, as a borough council, um, with obviously the decline of retail around in our town, that it's based on leisure, heritage and hospitality. This, I think, would be a fantastic um, addition to Tamworth's leisure um, uh, facilities and I can see absolutely no reason for uh, for having any problem with this at all. Thank you. Thank you very much Councillor Harper. Uh, anybody else wish to debate the uh, recommendation? In that case, unfortunately Council Wade because you were a bit late to joining us and you didn't see the first bit, you are not eligible to vote on this, on this item, however on the second uh, application you will be uh, because you'll hear all of the reports and questions, uh, so if you don't mind just not voting on this one. Um, it's been uh, moved and seconded, no one else wishes to debate any further, all those in favour? And that is carried, thank you very much. Uh, second application for consideration this evening is, uh, is application 0236 stroke 2022, 5 Coal Hill. Glenn. Thank you again, Chair. So this application is part of the future high street funded work in the Tamworth Town Centre. In essence, this is a relatively minor application for window changes, minor alterations to the property, 
and generally dealt with under delegated powers to the or, um, assistant director. However, it is brought to members due to it being within the future high streets master plan. One of the essential phases in delivering the objectives of the college quarter within the master plan, these proposals in line with the separate planning applications for the demolition of the rear modern extensions to make way for Tamworth Council uh, College to be relocated to the application site, allowing the enhancement of the market square and other elements of the master plan to come forward. The application therefore supports wider objectives of the master plan. The scheme is for the restoration and the adaptation, adaptation of the building for the new enterprise centre to provide new flexible business accommodation and meeting spaces to help support local startups and growing businesses. It will complement the existing town, Tamworth Enterprise Centre, which is well used and oversubscribed. Both the existing and new uses are within Class E, which combines retail and office use, so we're purely looking at the external physical alterations to the property. Just show some photos, pictures. So Five Coal Hill is the former co-op store. The building is locally listed, which means it is of a local townscape and historic interest that the council has identified as ourselves as worthy of protection. It is a Victorian building dating from the late 19th century, located within a prominent position on the corner of Church Street and Coal Hill. Its setting is also important with the town, Tamworth Town Centre conservation area and proximity to several listed buildings, including St Edith's Church, the Old Town Cross Pub, various Georgian buildings on Coal Hill. The application proposes the refurbishment and alteration of the building to provide replacement windows in place of doors to open to two of the shop fronts and alterations to the rear to include provision of a new lift enclosure. It would include removal of the second three floors and installation of new glazing similar to the existing windows to parts of the shop fronts on Coal Hill and Church Street. The windows will flow as a continuous frontage within the existing corner remaining as the entrance. It will also involve, involve in filling the opening in the rear ele western and southern elevations and installation of replacement windows and doors. A small section of the wall mounted louvres will be installed to serve at the plant room and switch room. These are to the rear of the building and will not be visible from public films and are purely functional. The new lift enclosure and plant to the rear of the flat roof, again not visible within the street scene and removal of a disused chimney. Internal works are also proposed. Uh, involving the addition and removal of internal walls to create usable spaces. Being internal, they don't require planning permission, but existing features such as the front staircase and tiled surroundings will be retained. I've got a picture of that as well, just an indication. Um, there we are. So as part of the consultation exercise, no objections have been received. The fundamental, fundamental issue here is the impact that this will have on designated heritage assets, the town centre conservation area and the grade one and two listed buildings in the building setting, and to the non-designated locally listed building itself. The report goes into detail on the policy aspects as we are required to assess significance and impact. The conservation officer has stated that the proposal would result in less than substantial and of substantial harm and considers the level of harm to be minimal, both to the listed building and to the character and appearance of the conservation area. She has no objections subject to the additional information being submitted in respect of profile details of frames, paint colour and mortar mix materials. This additional information will be provided as part of a condition requiring further information before development is commenced on site, which the agent has firmly agreed to. Finally, we will apply a note on the decision to make sure that any future application for signage is applied for as well. So overall, the scheme proposes substantial heritage benefits and sympathetic refurbishment and creation of a long-term viable commercial reuse of this building. And when balanced against heritage benefits for the building, the proposals are acceptable in planning and heritage terms. Thank you. Thank you very much, Glenn. Uh, we have a speaker on this item. Um, Mr. Mr. Fidget, do you want to come forward? Uh, Get yourself ready. There is a bottle of water there if you if you do want it, or if you want to take it away after you finish, please do. Um, as soon as you start speaking, uh, if by doing so you press uh, to the middle button uh, on there. Uh, as soon as you start speaking, your three minutes will, will happen. Uh, begin, uh, and if you keep an eye on the screen, uh, it will tell you count down two minutes, one minute, and thirty seconds. So whenever you're ready. 
Chairman, members, thank you very much. Um, I, I hopefully won't be uh, that, that long, certainly in light of uh, the, the officer's report. Um, this is um, an important application for the, uh, in the sense that it's the first um, of the key developments in the Future High Streets uh, programme. The application itself does three key things. Um, it brings back into viable use uh, an, an existing vacant building, um, which is a key plank, obviously, of sustainable development. It also restores an important locally listed building that's a key part of, of Tamworth's heritage. Um, and in that sense, um, the scheme has been designed very carefully to maintain all of the key um, attributes of the building um, so that it can uh, continue for a, for a new lifespan in its current form. It also provides new flexible business space, um, which is um, key to supporting growth in the local economy, given the uh, oversubscription of the existing enterprise centre, together with meeting spaces that, that can be hired uh, on a, a more ad hoc basis. So um, the scheme it, uh, overall has been sensitively designed. Obviously, there are certain uh, changes internally which are outside of the scope of this application to, to introduce lifts and other things to enable uh, disabled access throughout the building uh, to meet modern uh, requirements. But that um, goes part and parcel of the overall, uh, overall proposal. So uh, what will be created is um, a, a rejuvenation of a heritage building to provide much needed business space um, and provide uh, equality of access to, to, to all of the community to, uh, to use the facilities. Um, so on that basis, members, um, thank you for, for, for entertaining uh, us uh, this evening and commend the application. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, there are no further speakers, so I'm going to open it up to questions from members. Um, yeah, on the uh, subject of the signage, um, I've noticed on one of the, the drawings we have, um, the signage, the lower signage, the Tamworth Industrial Cooperative signage is, is being retained. The lower signage is to be removed. Is that simply the signage or is that the tile as well? Because the, the tile, as I'm, I'm sure you know, is original Tamworth Gibson Canning tiling, that beautiful butter coloured tiling immediately above the ground floor windows. Are those tiles being retained and it's just the signage that's being removed or are the tiles going as well? Thank you. Uh, I'm going to invite the applicant to clarify that if they can. Yeah, I, I can confirm that the tiles themselves are going to be retained. The the, the signage is is clip-on lettering essentially that sits above above the tile, so it's a more modern uh, addition. So the original lettering above that, which is sort of stenciled into the in, into the brickwork, it remains, and the tiles below remain. It's just the more modern uh, lettering that, that below it that's removed. Uh, any further questions? Yeah. If I may, Chair, thank you. Um, the, the building itself, if I can call it, the, build, the section on the right, and then there's the extension on the left, which uh, if we go down from the, on the left, the ground floor, what is actually happening to the frontage there? Because there isn't uh, an alcove entrance into that shop. Again, with, I suspect some uh, original flooring there. Is that being infilled, or is there a door going down? I'm not too sure what uh, what we're doing there. If I if I have made myself clear, I'm not sure if I have. Uh, uh, I'm going to refer that one to Glenn because it's just the exterior and the the the, the windows that is part of this application. Um, um, but I'm going to hand over to Glenn. Well, if it helps, I can go through each elevation in turn. So this is the north elevation. So this, I believe, would be facing St. Edith's Church. So that is what we have here. So in filling to be removed on that side. Uh, no, it's the other building, the, the building on the, the extension on the left. Oh, right. That's it. Yeah. That one here. Yeah. Yep. Marked with the red on the bottom right-hand corner. Oh, yeah, well, that's, so that's all demolished. That all will be removed. Right. 
So the the doorway is being removed and the the frontage is being glazed. Am I correct in that? That'd be my assumption. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I beg your pardon. I'm getting getting rather old in my yeah, in my dotage. Uh, I, I didn't quite hear that. Sorry. Yes. So you're right. Yes. It is. Yeah. Glazed. And the glazing, presumably, uh, obviously, it's, it's hugely important that. Um, the, the integrity of the Victorian building is respected and that this new glazing will respect the original the original high-tech standard of the Victorian era. Thank you. That's really good to hear. Any other questions from members? Councillor White. Thanks, Chair. Just, just a quick one. The, the, the windows that are already there yeah, we're going to replace the windows with the four, what I can see on this map, to the left, is it, to the left? So you've got the, the, the what John calls the, the extension bit to the left, what you're going to knock the front down, the windows there and the windows to the original building, they're just going to be four continuous windows, I take it, off the, what I can see on the plan. Um, so, looking at the plan in front, yeah. so it's the bit that's in red, as you can see it. Currently, um, you've, you have got glazing there already, but you've got a recessed doorway that actually extends quite a way in on the ground floor. Um, we won't need that doorway. So it's essentially removing the doorway and the recess back to, uh, so it's flush with the rest of the glazing. So it will become a glazed front with no actual access in. Because what, what lies behind that, um, in terms of a floor plan, is an office. And the recess door, A, it wasn't needed, but B, it took up quite a bit of commercial floor space within that office. So we're just pulling it back to the front. So we will just have sort of a glazed frontage instead. Does that answer your question, Councillor? So I've got 19 and 20 in front of me. And I assume 19 is going to be the finish article and 20 is how it sits now. So why couldn't we use the windows to maintain the look of the building instead of just whipping it out and pulling big windows in? I understand we need it open, and but why couldn't we retain those windows and make good use of them to the original frontage of the building. Uh, Councillor Wade, those are uh, looking at it from two different per perspectives. Um, 19 is looking down towards Colville, that's the corner of the building, whereas 20 is uh, looking at it from uh, where the co-op has moved to now. So it's two different, uh, two different uh, elevations. Um, but, Anna, did you want to come in? I was just going to make that point, actually uh, pictures 19 and 20, or slides, sorry, 19 and 20 are actually different elevations. Um, so yeah. Yeah, at 19, that, that will be retained essentially, those windows will still be retained. You'll have access in at the corner and then as you turn the corner onto Coles Hill, you've got this uh, elevation in front of you. So actually we're changing just the bits that are in red from a doorway back to a, a glass frontage. I've got, yeah. Uh, Councillor, dear Wade, on uh, slide 22 uh, of your pack, that is the correct elevation, uh, yeah. as, as the same as 20, and you can see the, 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 the doorway that will be removed in that one. Yeah. Okay. It's my, <clears throat> my mistake. I was looking at 19, 20, and I was thinking 19 was the finish article. No, 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 no I totally well, completely understand. To totally misread it. Completely understand, uh, Councillor Wade, um, the, the, the yeah. covered up slightly in other uh, the elevations in the, in your, uh, in the pack in front yeah, of you. Yeah, so, no problems, but No problems, mate. Uh, any further questions from members? Councillor Kamar. Just a comment, really, Chair. Um, slide 20. 1, 22, 23 and 24 appear to be overlaid over a previous application. It would be useful if we didn't have that. Thank you. Uh, no, um, uh, I agreed. Um, and we'll make sure that doesn't happen in the future. Uh, any further questions from members? 
Yeah, Councillor Harper. Thank you. Um, just very briefly, um, I don't. Th I think I'm writing uh, correct in thinking that this particular application um, does not affect the former baths, which are obviously beneath ground, and part of which I understand is still um, still survives. I haven't unfortunately been able to see it. We weren't able to see it uh, when we when we toured the building some uh, recently, um, but. I think that will probably be coming in a later application. Am I correct in thinking that, Anna? Yeah, so my understanding is that they have, the baths are under the the newer part of the co-op, so the former department store. I don't think there's a lot left, actually. Um, and at, no, at this point in time, we can't view it. It's not safe to do so. Yeah. No more questions? Recommendation in the report is to approve subject to condition for even to debate. I'm going to move that. Anybody wish to second? Councillor Harper, do you wish to reserve the right or do you want to speak now? Uh, I'll reserve the right, right, so thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Harper. In that case, it's been moved and seconded. I'm going to open it up to debate from committee members. Does anybody wish to debate the recommendation? <laughs> yeah, Councillor Harper. <laughs> I do apologise. I don't intend to monopolise the... Uh... The conversation but um how i look at this this is a hugely hugely important um development to an iconic tamworth building which has a fabulous place in the history of tamworth as i'm sure everybody knows it was built by reverend william mcgregor tamworth's greatest philanthropist greatest benefactor he did all sorts of wonderful things around the town, many of which, unfortunately, no longer exist. This does, and it's a terrific building. Both the um, original corner uh, plot and the extension. Um, and I'm thrilled that the, particularly that the um, tiling in the entrance hall and presumably the balustrade is all being retained and all those wonderful Victorian features um, which are so intrinsic of the building. Um, the windows are obviously crucial of crucial importance, and I'm, I'm delighted to hear that you're you're going to be respecting the original Victorian frontage and looking to repeat basically what's above. Um, it's a hugely exciting scheme. Personally, I, I would love to see above the alcove on the corner. I don't know if you're aware of it, but there's a beautiful alcove uh, on the corner plot between um, Corp uh, Church Street and um, Coal Hill, which would make a fantastic um, place for a bust of McGregor. Indeed, it would be a wonderful thing if this was renamed the McGregor Enterprise Centre or something to give it that sense of local pride, because William McGregor bought the Tamworth uh, co-op, well, he he established the Tamworth Co-op for the benefit of Tamworth people and um, who were previously to then could not afford to buy food in the in the shops, food and clothes. Um, he faced enormous um, competition from the established traders, but he, he managed to pull it through. And this building is testament to his perseverance and his determination uh, to do something positive and good for the people of Tamworth. So, uh, as a whole, I'm, I'm thrilled with this scheme, and um, I thank you so much for, um, personally, I, I, I thank you so much for, for what you're doing, and for the way you're, you're handling this um, iconic building, I think we can call it, and a uh, hugely important building to Tamworth. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, you very much. Thank you very much, Councillor Harper. Anybody else wish to jump in on the debate? If no one else wishes to, it's been moved and seconded. Can I have a show of hands of all of those in support, please? And that is carried. Everybody. Thank you very much, everybody. And that concludes the business for this evening. Um, there's going to be a short five-minute break. Uh, then Anna is going to have a facilitate a Q&A discussion for us. Uh, but five minutes, let the room clear. Uh, go get refill your water, use the bathroom, whatever. But thank you very much for your attendance this evening. <laughs>